Welcome to our Year R Transition video. My name is Louise New and I'm Principal of CFS. Obviously in a normal school year I would be welcoming you all now into our Carmelite Hall and meeting you face to face. But sadly, due to ongoing COVID restrictions, I need to communicate with you virtually at present. However, we will do all we can to ensure that you get to meet your child's teachers as soon as possible. And of course, we have our programme of home visits before the academic year begins. Whilst much of this video will be focusing on EYFS in particular and your child's first year at CFS, I want to extend a warm welcome to you and your child to the CFS family as a whole. Hopefully in September they will be walking through our doors for the first time at the beginning of a 12 year journey. And over the course of the next academic year and as your child settles into the school, I hope you begin to see everything that the school has to offer. But to begin with, I'm going to talk through with you some of the key people that you will be meeting over the coming weeks and months. The key people that will be involved in your child's education in their first year at school. And of course, all the most important information that you need to know ready for September. I'll also be passing over to James Garner, who is Deputy Principal of the school and the primary lead, a key person that you will be having a lot of contact with over the coming months. Year R is an extremely important time in your child's education. You may have older children, either at CFS or another school, who have been through this um, time of their lives before. But of course, for your son or daughter joining us in September, this is a really key moment for them. Hopefully they're excited, but they may also be quite nervous. Some of our children know each other or know a few people. Others have come from settings where they might not know anybody at all. But I can assure you that very quickly, through the work of the team, the home visits and the integration activities that we do in September, all 60 of our children will settle very quickly in an engaging and exciting learning environment. First of all, I'd like to introduce you to the key EYFS team. Firstly, our two teachers, Miss Panna and Miss Emmett, who will work together across the two classes and they are ably supported by Mrs Andrews and Mr Witt as the supporting teachers in EYFS. All four members of the team are extremely experienced and will work together collectively to oversee the education of all 60 children. Whilst they are the four main people for you to get to know over the coming months, there are a variety of other people that you will need to be aware of as your child moves through their time at CFS. Of course, as myself, Mrs New, as principal of the whole school, I do oversee both the primary and secondary phases. And although that's a thousand pupils, I do take a lot of time to try and get to know the pupils as individual, individuals and also to spend time getting in and out of classrooms. I particularly enjoy spending time in the EYFS unit and starting to build relationships and bonds with the pupils who, of course, I hope to see developing over the next 12 years. I also hope, maybe next year, maybe further into their educational journey, to spend some, some uh, smaller group time with your child during the Principal's Award. Every week from across the school, teachers nominate pupils to receive our highest level of award, where they receive five house points for a particular success. It might be in school or out of school. As well as these five house points, they'll also receive a certificate, a phone call home, and perhaps most excitingly for them and for myself, a, an hour or so in my office um, with other children having the principal's tea party with lots of hot chocolate and cake and a few games. So I really do look forward to meeting your children um, over the coming months. As mentioned before, I'm going to be passing over to Mr Garner shortly. Mr Garner is one of two deputy principals in the school. He works alongside Mr Phillips. Mr Garner takes the uh, primary lead operationally every day, whilst Mr Phillips does the equivalent in the secondary phase. So Mr Garner is your first port of call for any significant concerns or queries you may have, although obviously he liaises with myself on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and Mr Garner, along with myself and other members of the team, is a key figure that you will get to know quite well on the gate as you drop off and pick up your child. 
We then have Mrs Holton and Mr Hardwick, who are our two senior assistant principals. Both Mrs Holton and Mr Hardwick have all three roles, so they work across both primary and secondary to ensure a smooth transition between the two phases. Mrs Holton oversees inclusion, which means that she runs our special educational needs department, but also ensures adequate support um, for our looked after children and oversees the pupil premium funding in the school. Mr Hardwick's role in behaviour and pastoral is ensuring that all of our pupils um, adhere to high standards, their successes are rewarded through a really comprehensive praise system, but most importantly that the pupils at school feel safe and supported. Mr Hardwick is our designated safeguarding lead, so he also ensures day to day that all pupils in or out of school are safeguarded appropriately. Mrs Tunnycliffe is a uh, person that I'm sure you will get to know very quickly. Mrs Tunnycliffe is actually um, a maternity cover at present for Mrs Hayes, um, who I'll introduce you to as soon as she returns next academic year. Both Mrs Tunnycliffe and Mrs Hayes have two key roles in the school. Primarily, they are assistant principals who oversee primary pupil progress. So throughout the next um, seven years at the, um, of the school, they will ensure that your child is developing and progressing academically, emotionally and socially in the way that we would hope, achieving to the best of their potential. But day to day, Mrs Tunnicliffe also supports Mr Garner in the day to day running of the primary phase and is another key person that you will get to know um, on the school gate. Mrs Powell is our primary SENCO. So she supports Mrs Holton focusing in on the primary phase. So if your child has special educational needs, then Mrs Powell is somebody that you are likely to, to have direct communication with as she helps you and helps you support your child as they navigate through the next few years of schooling. And finally, Mrs Harris. Mrs Harris is, is a teacher, but actually has adopted a non-teaching role at CFS, which um, allows her to dedicate fully on being a pastoral support in the primary phase day to day. So she's there to, to help children if they need, and, and teachers if they need any extra time or support from her. But she's also our liaison officer, so she's our key point of communication. So if you email the primary office email address, then she's the person that is likely to be responding to you. And she'll be the person that if you need to come in because your child has, say, forgotten um, their lunchbox, or perhaps you are picking your child up early for an appointment for some reason, then it is Mrs. Harris that you will meet on a day to day basis. I'm now going to, to leave you there and pass over to Mr. Garner, who's now going to take over talking through with you in more detail everything that you need to know um, for your child's start in September. Again, I'm really sad that I can't be meeting you all in person, um, but I hope that we can do so as soon as possible. And please do not hesitate to contact the school um, uh, at any point if you have any further questions, concerns or just anything that you want to know prior to September. Um, we know this has once again been a quite a strange year but we're really excited to be welcoming our new EYFS cohort and I look forward to meeting you in the not too distant future. Hello, I'm Mr Garner and I'm Deputy Principal Primary. And as you can see, I'm not recording this from Chichester Free School and that's because just like your child, I'm new to CFS from September. I'm really looking forward to working with you and meeting your children and working with them in the next few years of their education. Mrs New has introduced all of the staff from the Early Years Foundation stage. It's my job now to tell you what it is we do. Firstly, we work as one unit. Pupils are based with one class teacher who will be your main point of contact, but during the day they'll move between the whole unit. This allows them to access the full range of learning activities that we have on offer and to access our specialist staff, each of whom have different strengths. We focus on learning by doing, the children will learn through play and we adapt the curriculum to cater for the individual children's needs. For example, if a child loves to play with sand, we will work to direct this play to include some number work or some written responses. Children in EYFS access forest schools weekly, on-site provision led by trained forest school facilitators. 
Over the course of the year, we slowly adapt the curriculum to include more formal carpet learning sessions and to increase the length of time interspersed with a continuous provision to prepare the children for year one. The framework for the early years foundation stage sets the standards for promoting the learning development and safety of the children from birth to five years in all Ofsted registered settings. The framework lays down the legal requirements for the early years childcare providers that they must meet. This includes learning developing requirements, assessment requirements, safeguarding and welfare requirements. Learning development requirements include specific areas of learning and development which should shape the activities and experiences that we offer. Assessment requirements are how we measure the children's progress and feedback to parents and carers. And safeguarding and welfare requirements are what we must do to keep the children safe and promote their welfare. Our reception classes follow the Early Years Foundation curriculum, which has seven main areas of learning. The prime areas, which are communication and language, physical development, personal, social and emotional development, and specific areas such as literacy, mathematics, understanding the world and expressive arts and design. A typical CFS EYFS day. So you can see here, this is a general timetable of how a day may look, but you need to remember that each day in early years is different. We have lots of different activities going on and some on different days of the week, which we will talk to you about later on in the year. So our doors open at 8.45 and our register is taken at nine o'clock, but it's really important to get your child in as close to 8.45 as possible because the first 15 minutes of the day is when our early morning activities take place or our link provision. And these activities are tailored to your child's needs and their personal targets. So it's a really important part of the day to get them ready for the rest of the day. Our doors will close or home time will be at 3 p.m. So they need to be picked up by 3 p.m. But we will open the gates and let you in about 10 minutes earlier, which just helps with the traffic flow. So coming in in the morning can be quite a daunting experience for both parents and children, but we want to work with you to ensure that this is a happy start to everyone's day. Your child might skip in one day and there might be tears the next. There might be tears from you and that's okay. It's a different experience and it's all new but we want to work with you to make sure that you feel supported and happy as well. If your child is really unsettled, then we may call you so that you can advise us on how best to work with your child. But you need to remember that nine times out of 10, by the time you've left out of the bottom gate, your child's probably smiling and happy, engaged in their morning activity. We know this is really important. So please don't worry if your child does get upset because we've got lots of experience with getting them settled. We're really lucky to have such an amazing space for our early years unit. So we've got two classrooms that link together with a cloakroom in the middle where your child will have their own peg for their belongings. And within our large classrooms, we will encourage your child to explore. They'll be able to access both rooms during explore times and they may have some time where they are just in their base classroom with their base teacher. But learning will take place across the unit outside and in both classrooms, whether that be their base room or not. Our outside space has many facilities and of course, all of these areas are catering your child towards meeting their early years goals. So the children will have two break times during the day. The first will be a playtime in the morning and the second will follow after they've eaten at lunch. Now, during these play times, the children will have access to a playground, which is separated from the other children. And this will be monitored by teaching and support staff that they are familiar with. So the people that are watching them already have a good understanding of their emotional and social needs so that we can support them as best as possible during their play. 
During their playtime, they have lots of equipment out which will help them develop their gross motor skills and also socialise in a stimulating, fun and supportive environment. During lunchtime, they will all have their free school meal which will be eaten in the main dining hall. And during this time when they are eating, they will be supported again by the same teaching and support staff so that we can keep an eye and ensure that they're actually eating enough to make sure they have that energy to last them throughout the day and also highlight any things if they're struggling eating a certain type of food, etc. These lunches should be pre-booked so that we can ensure every child is getting something that they enjoy eating during this time period. Throughout the day, they also have an opportunity to have a snack. This snack is a piece of fruit or a piece of vegetable and, and they also have a milk carton as well. Um, and we call this a rolling snack. So when they feel a little bit hungry or they want their milk, they can independently go and sit down at the table and enjoy that and speak to their friends whilst they are having their snack time. Here are some frequently asked questions. How does drop off and pick up work? Am I allowed to drive onto site? Yes, you are. There are spaces available at the front of the school for reception parents. You'll be issued with a permit so that you can pull in, bring your child into school and of course, after school, pull in and come and collect them. If COVID restrictions are still in place in September, will this change the timings or processes at all? We will review this as and when COVID restrictions change, but we will send out further information to you if required. What equipment and uniform does my child need? Please can you make sure that they have a clearly named water bottle, which is recognisable by the child. That really helps us out. They also need to have a waterproof coat because we do go out in all weathers. So something that's going to keep them dry and happy to go outside. Uniform, you can buy the white shirts and skirts and trousers. Um, at your local supermarket or from anywhere. It just needs to be a plain polo shirt. It doesn't have to be one with a CFS logo on it. We would like you to please have a CFS jumper and a book bag. All details of our uniform can be found in the policy which is on our website. Of course, you'll need forest school kit as well, which again, the details are on the website. But if you've got any questions about things that your child will need, please do get in contact with us and we can reassure you. When is the start of term? Your child will start full time at CFS on Monday the 13th of September. The week prior we'll be, we'll be running transition events, so we will contact you about these. Will we receive a school calendar? Yes, we will be sending out the school calendar in the next few weeks. Will my child be in one of the houses? Will it be the same as the uh, their siblings? Yes, we've got four houses, Noctua, Pegasus, Aquila and Phoenix. We will let you know which house your child has been put into and it will be the same as their sibling, even if their sibling is starting in year seven. What rewards would my child receive for being good? We love to give out rewards here at CFS. We've got a range of awards, including house points, stickers, certificates, and much more. So we look forward to your child receiving lots of these next year and for further years to come. I hope that has answered some of your questions. If you do have any more questions, please don't hesitate to contact Carrie at admissions where she'll be able to help you. The most common question when children join EYFS is, is my child at the correct level? The answer is yes. Now, this is because the EYFS curriculum is really vast because the government have an understanding that children have had a range of experiences outside of school and not all experiences are the same. So what they have done is made the statutory guidance so vast that we can actually place every child within that framework. 
We then do our baseline assessment so we can see what the child knows and their next steps in learning and then ensure we as teaching staff make sure that the environment is rich and stimulating so that it targets those areas and specific needs of your child. The EYFS curriculum is not a one size fits all. It's a what does that individual child need and how are we going to put it into the environment to help your child individually progress. So you do not need to be concerned of seeing one child hit a milestone before your child does. This is perfectly fine because the curriculum enables us to adapt the environment to meet every child's needs and wants. We hope that this transition document has been helpful for you, reassuring and answered all of your questions. If you do have any further questions, please don't hesitate to contact Carrie at admissions. We really look forward to seeing you in September.